Here I have a common type of puzzles. You're given a bunch of shapes, usually arranged in a rectangle, and you're given the shapes of other possible arrangements of the given pieces. You're asked to find said arrangements. Say we did all the shapes in the manual, and we want more. So, we might try seeing if we can do other shapes, but we will quickly run into shapes like a square, where no matter how hard we try to arrange the pieces, they don't seem to fit in. So, is making a square impossible? And what about other shapes? Well, if we want to make a square, the first thing we note is that it can't be too small, otherwise our pieces won't fit in, and if the square is too large, then the pieces might fit in, but they would leave a lot of empty space. So, the size of the square has to fit all the pieces without leaving gaps. This would require that the area of the square be the sum of the areas of the pieces. And to figure out that area, we assume that the side length of the triangular piece is one unit, and we will find that the total area of the pieces is five square units. This means our square needs to have area five, and as such, a side length of square root of five. All of that is of course assuming we can build a square, because now that we know the exact size of a possible square, it still doesn't seem any easier, and that's because it's impossible and it's not hard to prove. We just have to look at one edge of the square. If we try to line up pieces on that edge, we will be hard pressed to find a collection of pieces that would fit in perfectly. And that is because all of the side length of the edges of the pieces are linearly independent of that of the square. As such, no set of pieces can do one edge of the square, meaning we can't build the square at all. That being said, the pieces we had were made of paper, and paper can be cut. So, can we cut the pieces we started with to get a new set of pieces that would do the trick? This can fix the problem we had with the edge length, but is it enough? The answer is yes, it is, but trying to see this by cutting seven different pieces and seeing how they can be used together can get tricky. So, we take a shift in perspective here, and rather than looking at all of them as individual pieces, we look at them as one whole shape. For example, the rectangle from the beginning. For if we can find a way to cut the rectangle into pieces and arrange them to get a square, then we will be done. Actually, to illustrate this, let's put the square aside for a moment and take an easier example. Like the rectangle with a third of the height and three times the width of the original rectangle. For this example, if we look at our original rectangle, and we want to cut that into pieces that can form the new rectangle, it shouldn't be that hard, we just have to cut the rectangle into thirds, and have the thirds be side by side to get the new rectangle. And if we return the pieces over the rectangle, and then overlay the pieces we actually want to cut, it becomes obvious the cuts we have to make to the pieces. So, returning to the square, how can we cut the rectangle? to get the pieces for the square. Trying to do what we did for the previous rectangle won't help, for no matter how thin or wide, horizontally or vertically, we cut the rectangle, we won't be able to get rectangular pieces that can simply be stacked next to each other to get the square. So if making rectangular pieces won't work, we will have to make some diagonal cuts. And here, while we vary the degree of a possible cut, we see that at a certain angle, the length of the cut is the same as that of the edge of the square. Taking that cut, we get two pieces, a triangle and a trapezoid. Stacking them on top of each other, we get a parallelogram, that when reoriented to have the sides with the length we want facing up and down, it becomes apparent what cuts we have to make to get the square. This method can easily be extended to non-square rectangles Barring two small issues, the first being sometimes the desired rectangle would be too thin and so neither of its sides can be used to cut the puzzle rectangle. To solve this, we need to take a second important shift in perspective. Rather than thinking about how to cut our rectangle to get the new one, we can think the other way around. 
how to cut the new rectangle to get the original one or at least to a shape we can reach from the original rectangle for the case where the rectangle is too thin it becomes evident that we want to make a wider rectangle since this would be a rectangle that we know how to transform into to do this we only have to cut the rectangle vertically into pieces that can be stacked on top of each other to get a rectangle with appropriate width and height from here it's just the rectangle to rectangle that we had before the second issue you might face is that sometimes the parallelogram we get would be so slanted that we can't make a vertical cut that encompasses the whole height of the shape this issue is solved by cutting the parallelogram into thin layers where each can be done in a way that maintains the width with the knowledge of how to do any rectangle doing triangles becomes easy as all we have to do really is to turn the triangle into a rectangle which in turn can be done as follows for any triangle taking a horizontal cut midway vertically would result in two pieces a triangle and a trapezoid by noting how each side of the triangle is equal in length to one of the legs of the trapezoid we use them to form a parallelogram which in turn can be turned into a rectangle and from here everything follows as usual and that's about it knowing how to do a triangle is enough to do any straight edged shape we want since for any such shape we can cut it into triangles each one in turn can be turned into a rectangle of appropriate dimensions that can be stacked As a bonus fact, since we proved that we can cut our rectangle into pieces that can be used to make any polygon and vice versa, we have proved that we can build any polygon from any other. And this fact in geometry has a name, and that is the bollier gerwine theorem. It is most commonly known for how it relates to Hilbert's third problem about cutting and reforming polyhedra and how we cannot extend this theorem to three dimensions though that should be its own video.